He is Robin Leach. He is Jada Markin. This is Car Keys. And those who hear this show will find that it is the first show in 2023. So welcome, everybody, to a continuing series of our shows. Uh, Jay is with me, and I'm going to start the year and this show with a review and a, sort of a general <clears throat> raving and ranting about gas prices around Connecticut first and then Connecticut versus New York second. Uh, <clears throat> the governor of Connecticut had uh, <clears throat> extended a tax break on gasoline, I guess that's at the wholesale level. I'm not sure whether it's a wholesale retail. It doesn't matter. Of 25 cents a gallon, which last I knew was extended until uh, <clears throat> the day this show is being uh, made and will be broadcast off and on, maybe. Uh, <clears throat> at which point the gas tax is going to unra- savings is going to unravel or was going to unravel at five cents a month until the 25 cents uh, savings was recovered. That, you know, gas prices have various reasons for being where they are, and none of them are really realistic, in my opinion. Uh, to wit, uh, three weeks ago, the gas in Lakeville, Connecticut, was at 309 a gallon and 319 in Sharon, which is our, which is, it's our, our two northwest corner stations that uh, are nearest to our broadcast area. Lakeville is now at <coughs> four, what is it? No, 342.9 a gallon, which is 343. <coughs> it went up just before the new year began, and Sharon is still at 319 as this show is being done. <coughs> uh, the company that serves all our local stations, <coughs> excuse me, uh, is owned by Patterson Oil Company, and they own many of the Shell and Mobile stations, and in some cases, I believe, the Sitco stations around um, the northwest region. Also and along Route 22? Uh, they don't own anything in Route 22 okay. uh, that I know of, because that's New York State. Uh, for a long time, New York State has been slow in reducing the cost of gasoline along the new the Route 22 corridor until most recent my most recent trip down which was uh, within days of this show where gas was as low as 3159 a gallon uh, <coughs> prior to this year and <coughs> as high as 399 a gallon uh, right before you get on 684 at the most expensive shell station in that part of New York State which is the route 22 Carter uh, but Patterson Oil Company has been doing something which probably very few of the listeners may really care about, but they've been moving their pricing around in the northwest Connecticut corner over the last three weeks. We may be readying for this uh, gas tax recovery situation. I'm not sure. Uh, when it was 3.09 in Lakeville at the mobile station there, uh, it suddenly went to 3.19 and or thereabouts, and I found that the 309 uh, price at uh, Lakeville had uh, transfor- tra- been transported to <laughs> Canaan, where the Shell and the Mobile Station were at least briefly 309 uh, a gallon or 310 if you had the nine tenths of a cent, and Lakeville was at 329 or three somewhere above that. So the gas price did not really change or go up at Lakeville because of a rise in gas prices in general. It just got transferred from one uh, station owned by Patterson Oil Company to another. Um, That goes on in Tarrington now. Uh, For those of us who have spent time driving around Tarrington, not necessarily looking for the cheapest gas in Tarrington, but just on the routes I take when I go visit stores in Tarrington. And so Patterson used to set all their prices for both the Shell and the mobile stations, because they own all the stations in most cases, at the same price so that no one station got an advantage by people shopping for the lowest price. They have now gotten smart about it, and they, I guess that's smart, and are now rotating pricing around many of their stations in Tarrington. Uh, I have seen as much a, a, a price difference as high as 10 cents a gallon, uh, as low as 3 or 4 cents a gallon from one like 
kind station. That means all the mobile stations uh, or the shell stations or another. New York has come down to 3.15.9, as I said a few moments ago, and I don't know why, because I don't think New York had a uh, gas tax uh, uh, advantage at all, and they were they were up in the 349 range, and they're still along the Route 22 card or some stations at 349 credit price, 339 uh, cash price, and uh, so when you, anybody who really is mainly compulsive about gas payments, which I am, and the listeners <laughs> will noticed. Uh, you, I do not spend extra gas trying to find the cheapest gas. I just happen to have roots in my lifetime in my life that take me where I can play this game of knowing where the lowest gas prices are and taking advantage of them. Uh, diesel prices have also flipped around a little bit. Jay is a diesel price expert, and uh, the mobile station I believe has gone back over five dollars a gallon of, of diesel. It, it was uh, a little below that as recently as uh, a couple of weeks ago from when this show is being done. So, everybody, we are going to see gas prices theoretically rising at $0.05 cents a month. Whether it will be uh, consistent among all the stations, I don't know. Uh, my last comment on the mobile station of Lakeville is that maybe Patterson Oil is trying to alert us that the gas price, which they seem to be trying to recover at all in one cent to $0.25 cents higher than what they were at one point, or actually uh, not quite that, 15 cents higher than they were at one point, uh, to see what, what's going to happen. Um, so the gas, can I make a couple of observations? Yes, go right ahead, Jay. So uh, a few things, yes, you mentioned I, I, I need diesel for one of my cars, and the price of diesel has gone way up relative to the price of gas, and I find uh, more disparities in the price of diesel than I do in the price of gas, to be honest. Also, the difference between gas prices and diesel has gone up. It's now close to $2 difference in price. In some and, um, you know, I drive it less, uh, and, and it gets get great mileage, so it doesn't really affect me too much. Uh, but you have to think about the overall, you know, uh, for instance, uh, I've been on the roads quite a bit, as we know, the last few weeks. You know, I see all those uh, hundreds of thousands of trucks on the road, you know, and the cost of goods being transported has gone up uh, pretty significantly. Uh, that's just a, a, a side note. The other thing I want to say um, is that a lot of people in our neck of the woods have, you know, nice uh, uh, foreign cars with big engines that run on premium gas, and um, the price of premium gas is substantially higher and outrageous in some cases relative to the price of uh, <coughs> regular gas. And the gas stations with the cheapest prices on regular gas don't necessarily have the cheapest uh, uh, premium gas. So it's a, it's a whole different ball game if you're, if you're putting premium uh, gas in your car. Yes. Um, and lastly, what I would say is, you know, there's apps for that. Um, even Google Maps, if you just put gas stations in Google Maps, and, you know, it'll give you the gas stations around you with a live uh, pricing. Uh, and if you're really looking for, for cheap gas on whatever route you are, you just use the app and, and, and go for the station. And, uh, and I'll leave it at that. Well, I, <clears throat> just to follow up on postscript on that, uh, you're right about the premium. All the prices that we, I talk about, of course, are base level for regular grades of gasoline. And they used to be before the, main, the uh, distributors, I guess, or got smart or got greedy. It used to be 10, 20, and 30 cents difference between the regular, mid-grade, and premium across the board. Uh, Jay, you came across the country, uh, and you saw very low prices in some place, well below what we're talking about in some states. And I'll bet you the uh, difference between the base grade and uh, premium out there was not anywhere near the difference that we ex we uh, experience here in the Northeast. Um, it's just uh, it just goes to show you that when you hear a news story that says, "Oh, gas prices may go up a bit because they're transferring from winter grade to summer grade, summer grade to winter grade, and they change the formulation," is BS. I'm pretty sure uh, across the board because I have never been able to discern 
when I've heard the story that they were tr- switching over to the next the season of grade of gas because they have to reformulate it for winter driving or summer temperatures or whatever, uh, n- noticeably change uh, in our stations around here. And I have paid subtle attention to this. Uh, it may seem funny to listeners. No, but, it isn't. But remember, but, for years now, Lynn, let's 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 be frank. It's not just about gas prices, okay? These story, it isn't. these, but well, that's relevant to your listeners. Basically, it's about everything. The reasons given for the event that happened, in most cases, is you know very creative, but not. I agree. Very creative is a good phrase. Not justifiable for real reality. Uh, reality, at least certainly in the gas world, in my opinion. Yes, if the price of oil is noticeably up, gas is going to go up across the board. But when it's been stable at below $80 a gallon for the last several weeks, and it may be, whether it's above it or now as this show is being <clears throat> done, I do not know. But uh, it basically, when the oil is down there, gas prices are slow to get down to where they can be with oil prices uh, trading in the world markets at this level. Uh, Let's move on. Rivian, uh, the SUVs, uh, which is a station wagon version of the pickup truck, are now seen around the northwest corner, thanks to Jay. Well, there's one being seen that really needs a car wash, uh, (laughs) or these people are having a lot of fun going off the beaten track with it, which it is the best vehicle to do so. Absolutely. Uh, one is right up the street from you, Jay. Uh, that too. Parked in the road, I think. And that may or may not be the one you're talking about. No, but, that one's uh, clean. So Rivian is making inroads. Uh, their production is, I guess, slowly increasing. Uh, everybody, and I've only talked to two owners, so that's not much of everybody, are thrilled with their Rivians. Uh, they just None of them are being used as a, a commercial or a, a, a heavy-duty type of use. Uh, they are just like many people who buy the loaded pickup trucks and use them as second cars uh, as, or as luxury alternatives to uh, passenger car uh, models. And uh, they have the money to buy them and they have the money to feed them, although I, don't know, I still don't know what it costs to charge an electric vehicle, be it Tesla, Rivian, VW, Audi, or what. Uh, well, it's about to go up. Grid. Significantly, and that's the other, you know, thing in in, in energy pricing. Uh, Which as is going up too, go incidentally. Up. In our neck uh, of the woods, as Eversource is raising their, uh, I believe, supply rates to twenty one point nine or twenty four point nine cents a kilowatt hour versus my last bill before this was, I believe, at like thirteen plus cents per kilowatt hour. Yeah, I think I think that's correct, or, or, or close to the. Close to the numbers, yes. Um, so, yeah, we still don't know exactly what it costs, but I, I think, and people tend to forget, you know, people with electric cars, the concern has been uh, range, all about exactly. range, yep. but there is still, you know, energy consumption, and, and these big SUVs uh, like the Rivian, uh, like the big BMW, like the Tesla X, um, like the uh, uh, vehicles coming out, the, the, the Hummer and the Cadillac, are going to be, you know, consuming more energy than, than, than a Hyundai, a Kia, or, uh, or a uh, Chevy Bolt. Correct. Um, you know. It's going to be interesting though. to watch this, Jay, and, and listeners. Um, the, uh, I just uh, came back from uh, Quebec in Canada over the holidays uh, prior to the new year, and... Uh, there were very few. I had been in Barcelona earlier, reported on this show about what the high degree of electric vehicles that were on there from the uh, transportation daily, you know, city buses, uh, hybrids, or in one or two cases, a fully electric bus were seen on the streets in Barcelona. To uh, but back to Quebec, uh, very few electric vehicles are evident in Quebec in comparison to what we saw in Barcelona. Now, uh, the cities are quite different, but. Uh, having driven uh, the roads there to, between uh, Connecticut and uh, Canada, uh, talking about range anxiety, it became very much a, a uh, subject in my head as I was driving between Quebec and Montreal, which was uh, quite a, uh, a drive. It's a long drive. Uh, and 
seeing very few electric vehicles made me think that the Canadians are, are still uh, dealing with, uh, uh, they do a lot of driving between Montreal and Quebec. I, do, I know nothing about the charging station uh, available along that route. Uh, it is not the same as driving in the U.S., where you go up 95 and every so many miles as a, uh, a major gas uh, road. You know, roadside gas station with 20 pumps for gas or whatever they are, and uh, as yet, I haven't seen every one of those not Route 95 leaving Fairfield County and heading towards Massachusetts or Rhode Island, uh, showing a, a high degree of electric charging stations at every one of them, uh, much less seeing any any of them. Can I just interject? The slightest amount of research would show that um, the situation in Canada is certainly not the same as it is here. Right. That is true. Um, so electric vehicles are not uh, are not making the inroads up there, at least in, in, where I was over the holiday period. Uh, I saw, of course, big suburbans cruising the streets, uh, navigators, uh, some of them being used as taxi transport transporters, uh, probably groups coming from an airport into the city to the hotels. Uh, I. I, but everything else is either uh, gas or diesel in terms of uh, 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 vehicle usage in, in the majority of the vehicles on the roads. Incidentally, gas is arranged between a dollar uh, forty-one to a dollar fifty-four, uh, probably point nine for per liter. So a liter, a three point eight liters is equivalent to an American gallon. So, so how much is it per gallon? By all those, these last two figure ranges by four to find out what a gallon approximately would cost in Canada right now. And this is for gasoline. So what are the two figures? Uh, well, there was between, we, I, I got it at 141.9, but right outside Quebec it was and how many how, how many liters? Uh, oh, I put so it in. So 3.8, so it's $6, six, dollars, six it's, uh, it's Canadian high, dollars it a six gallon. It's plus dollars a gallon, Canadian. Now, yeah. Canadian dollar right now is, you get a dollar twenty nine nine per one dollar American, so you can uh, multiply the Canadian value by seventy percent to equivalent. Just trying to get a gas dollar. price, guys. What I said, I was just trying to get a gas price, guys. But let's. You got uh, it. All right. And thanks. More. Uh-huh. Uh huh. All right. Jay, so you six minutes. Say? Well, I was thinking. You know, looking at the the year end. Um, you know, going into twenty twenty three. What are we? What are we expecting to see in the in in the automobile market this year, and how was 2022, and how did it compare to 2021? And um, you know, obviously, we're seeing a, a a lot more electric vehicles coming out. I think now we have over 50 uh, purely electric models on, on, on the market out of I think over a little over 600 overall different models of vehicles that are available to consumers here in the U.S. Um, so definitely more more uh, options Choice. for people uh, looking at electric cars. Um, well, the you know, Bolt is out, too, Jane. Isn't that the cheapest electric vehicle possible of the group and the lower price offering? I don't know that it is the cheapest, but it's certainly it's on, the, on the more affordable side of things. Yes. Um, and, and it's interesting to see. Uh, I, I was reading an, uh, an article just um, this morning about brand loyalty. As, as new electric cars come out, it seems that people are a lot more are, are le- a lot less loyal to the brands the of brand. vehicles they have been buying. So it is offering the opportunity to manufacturers to to uh, you know attract new customers from and and you know obviously people buying a Rivian. Uh, Rivian is brand new on the market. Um, they're they're obviously quote unquote stealing uh, sales from from other people. So who are who are they going to be stealing their 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 sales well, from? Yeah, um, in that and as production ramps up for Rivian, I think they're probably behind on the orders versus the capability of filling the orders. Um, oh, sure. That will definitely uh, compete with the Ford Lightning, for example, and they and I think Chevrolet has got one out. I I don't see much news about it. Uh, inventories actually are improving. I'm swapping topics as we're coming to the end of the mm-hmm. show. Inventories are improving. Uh, it, not much is being said about it, but you can go by some of the dealerships I go by, and there are a lot more uh, new vehicles available on the lots of some of these dealerships, which tell me that either sales are slowing so they're building inventory, 
or the chip shortage is, is disappearing in some cases. Uh, not disappear. Yes, it's, and yes. They're not disappear, but they are getting better uh, supply and is allowing the manufacturers to start producing vehicles for uh, dealerships other than uh, orders put in by retail buyers, which has been going on for a while at Ford, and I'm sure all the other manufacturers, which uh, those who actually put orders in were getting their vehicles ahead of anything that was showing up on lots for people to go lot browsing and pick something off the lot. Uh, so I, I think overall car sales are, are vehicle sales are down in 2022 relative to 2021, <laughs> even though they picked up in the second half uh, of the year uh, because of, of improved uh, um, um, logistics and, 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 and availability of, of components. Um, I'm not sure 2023 is going to be a great year, nor neither in the car market or anywhere else for that matter. But um, And it is you know, noteworthy that we're still lagging behind uh, overall sales of the pre-pandemic level, of pre-pandemic, excuse me, pre-pandemic levels. Uh, You know, we were at 16, 17 million uh, vehicles a year, and we are now down around the 13 million. So we're still down relative to pre-pandemic levels. Um, And it's going to be a competitive market, and, and it's actually... Pretty, it's showing up in uh, terms of financing offers, 1.9% for six years or something, uh, and leasing offers, uh, Jay. So, yes, it's returning to maybe the normal days where they were actually competing for your our business. We shall see. Yes, we, we shall. See. All right. Any last uh, two-minute yeah, warning? I have one safety thing for people in this winter driving. Uh, it's been noted right. that when the temperatures were really down around zero, uh, windshield washers on many cars were not functioning properly because uh, even this so-called 20 below zero protection of the of the wash uh, washer fluids going into most of our cars, if you even have it adequately in your containers, was were freezing at the output, and therefore you were following these people driving in this slushy rain and snow, uh, uh, making a mess on your windshield, and you try to wash the stuff off, and nothing comes out of your washer safety trip is make sure your washers are working before you go on an extended travel uh, plan and make sure you have washer fluid, uh, adequate amounts of washer fluid in your containers because if you haven't put washer fluid in a long time, they may be empty and you should be able to Uh, clean your windshield because it's very hard to I have another tip. Uh, And as we have temperatures that hover between being warm out and very cold, and we've had that in the past, uh, the uh, possibility of black ice uh, becomes real, and I'm not saying this for today or tomorrow, but um, I have just seen over the last few days a bunch of videos, uh, yes, wasting my time uh, watching YouTube, um, of vehicles sliding around on black ice. And even though it's, it's kind of funny, when you see the videos, it's actually not funny at all. And you even see parked cars in streets in the cities that start you know, sliding down hills. Um, be aware, uh, black ice is treacherous, uh, and if there's it's any invisible. risk of, of those kinds of conditions, do not get on the roads. I mean, it's that simple. He is Robin Leach. He is Jada Markin. This is Car Keys.